Hey guys, I wanted to show you this Copeland compressor that I pulled apart. It came out of a one and a half ton air conditioning condensing unit. When you're pulling these scroll compressors apart, all you got to do is zip right below the weld there and this top segment comes off. You'll see the pressure relief there and then there's also a check valve in the top segment here and then you get your compressor so there's three bolts that hold this top section on sometimes there's four and you can pull it apart and have a look so you can see the copper plating there this particular compressor when i diagged it it was mechanically seized the windings in the motor were fine it had just tripped the breaker so i was kind of concerned didn't know why that the bearings is seized i didn't know if there's an oil flow issue or there was getting some uh, maybe some liquid flood black washing the oil out of the crank so it was i was important to me to to tear it apart and see why the compressor had seized and so when i saw the copper plating it was a clear indication that whoever started the compressor up didn't pull all the moisture and air out of the system and that created the the copper plating so if you want to go a little bit more in depth to pull the unit apart. You just got to cut below these dimples here. That's what holds the whole compressor in there. And then you can pull this top segment apart. You can see how much copper plating's on that main bearing there. So that's, the bearings got tight and basically just mechanically seized the compressor. So when I did the compressor replacement, there wasn't there was also no filter dryer in the system so i was i was kind of concerned that the uh, metering device was uh, maybe forced open so it could have been flooding back so i forced a bunch of nitrogen through the system in reverse and um, just vented it out the side of the unit while the compressor was out and just made sure that it was really clean and and then put a new filter dryer in so i'm pretty confident that the unit's going to last a long time and then you can pull your rotor out and inspect it and you can see how much there's copper there and not a whole lot right there but if you look on this main bearing it's totally coated all the way around so one cool thing about these scroll compressors is how the top segment works here and you can see it just comes out and it, there's a gasket that seals so what they're doing is it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there's a very small hole. If I turn it up here, you might be able to see that small hole. And then it's vented into here. So they're taking some of the pressure there, about maybe half of what the discharge pressure is, and they're lifting this seat up. And it's sitting up against here and seals. Seals off and sends the discharge gas into the top section here. So when the compressor's off there's that gas is going to vent down this is going to come off and then not seal against the top of the compressor the check valve is going to hold the high side but this main piece is going to come down so why is that important well when you get into bigger compressors they have the advanced temperature protection so here I cut this one away and put some bolts on it so you can kind of see the scroll action. I don't think I'll be able to do it very well with one hand, but this is, I just cut this apart, put some bolts on it. But the, the cool thing is this has the advanced temperature protection. And what that is, is you can see the little orifice here, same as this small compressor, but they have this snap disc in here. And when it gets too hot, it vents this chamber to the suction side right here. You can see the big orifice here. And essentially, they're going to unload the compressor. The compressor is going to run and it's not going to pump. So I just actually did a, a Copeland course at our supplier. And the guy was telling us about the uh, advanced temperature protection and how people misdiagnose it a lot because... The compressor is running, but it's not pumping. And exactly what's happening is this seat here is actually slammed down and it's not sealing against the top surface. So the discharge gas is just short cycling the system. So when the snap disc closes, this retainer will sit up 
little bit higher and seal against this top surface. So they use this same concept in their digital scroll compressors as well. And what they do is they just put a solenoid valve where that snap disc is. So on the smaller units, they actually have a pipe that comes out external of the compressor and they have a solenoid valve there to either hold back the gas in the chamber, in this chamber here, or vent it to the suction of the compressor. So they're basically, when they're unloaded, the compressor, this seat will be down, not sealing against this top section. And when it's loaded, this will close, close this port off here. This is gonna rise up and seal against the top. So the important thing to know with the advanced temperature protection is whenever you have high discharge temperature, you can possibly trip that snap disc and bent the compressor. So they're gonna tell you to let the compressor cool down and then it'll recycle. So a couple of things that can do that is obviously high discharge pressure. That's gonna give you a high compression ratio and increase the discharge temperature. And then another thing that people don't think about as much is low suction pressure. When you get lo low suction pressure, it has a more drastic effect than the high head pressure in the fact that you're creating quite a bit more heat when you're compressing the refrigerant and on a low charge you can actually trip the advanced temperature protection even when your head pressure is really low so i'd like to show this to our guys just so they have a better understanding of how to diagnose these compressors and how they fail so if you like the video like it and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff subscribe